In 2014, while Boeing was still trying to recover from the nightmare delays of the 787 Dreamliner, Airbus pulled off one of the smartest moves in modern aviation. They took a design that was already over 20 years old, the A330, gave it new life with modern engines and suddenly began stealing Boeing's customers right out from under them. While it looked like Airbus had outsmarted Boeing again, the story would take a turn no one saw coming. Because Boeing's revenge came in the form of long-term dominance that Airbus is still fighting to overcome. When the 787 Dreamliner was first announced in 2003, it promised to change everything. Boeing's bold bet was on an aircraft that could fly farther, burn less fuel, and open new long-haul routes that weren't possible before. The Dreamliner was built using cutting-edge carbon fiber composites, an advanced electrical system that replaced traditional hydraulics, and cabin pressurization that made long flights more comfortable. Airlines loved the idea. Boeing booked hundreds of orders before the plane had even flown. What Boeing didn't plan for was just how difficult building a jet this advanced would be. The Dreamliner became one of the most delayed aircraft programs in aviation history. Problems with suppliers, wiring, software, and most famously, its lithium-ion batteries turned what was supposed to be Boeing's shining moment into a public struggle. By the time the first 787 finally entered service in 2011, it was more than three years late and billions over budget. That gave Airbus a massive opening. At the time, Airbus had its own answer to the Dreamliner in the works, the A350, but it wasn't ready yet. The A350 was meant to go head-to-head -head with Boeing's 787 and 777, but developing it would take years. In the meantime, airlines were desperate for efficient, wide-body jets that they could actually get their hands on. And that's where Airbus made a move that would prove far smarter than it first appeared. Instead of waiting for the A350, Airbus looked at the A330, a jet that had already been flying since the early 1990s, and realized something. The A330 still had life left in it. Its airframe was solid, airlines already operated it, and it could easily be updated with the same new generation engines and systems that made Boeing 787 so appealing. That realization gave birth to the A330neo, short for new engine option. The A330 had already earned a reputation for being one of the most reliable wide-body aircraft in service. It was beloved by airlines like Singapore Airlines, Qatar Airways, and Delta for its efficiency and versatility. In many ways, it was the workhorse that kept global air travel running while the headlines were dominated by flashier jets. So when Airbus announced the A330neo, the message was clear. You don't need to wait for the future. We can give you something efficient right now. Airbus launched the A330neo in 2014, at a time when Boeing was still trying to stabilize Dreamliner production. The move was brilliant because it cost Airbus just around $2 billion to develop, a fraction of the more than $15 billion Boeing had already poured into the 787. And unlike Boeing, Airbus didn't have to reinvent the wheel. They simply improved a proven design, swapped in modern Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 engines, added new wings and sharklets, reworked the cabin to include better lighting and more comfort. For airlines, this was a perfect middle ground. They could get a fuel-efficient wide body without the weight or the risk of a completely new aircraft. The A330neo quickly won over some big names. TAP Air Portugal became the launch customer. Delta ordered dozens, seeing it as a cost-effective alternative to the 787. For airlines that already operated older A330s, the upgrade was seamless. Same pilot type rating, same maintenance familiarity, and cheaper transition costs. And the numbers were hard to argue with. The A330neo promised around 14% better fuel efficiency compared to the older A330 models, while offering lower purchase prices than the Dreamliner. Airbus had turned what looked like an aging workhorse into a cash-generating machine. Airbus also had a strategic advantage, the supply chain. While Boeing scrambled to untangle its complicated global manufacturing network, Airbus leaned on its stable European system. The result was predictable, steady output, something airlines craved in the post-787 chaos. If you're enjoying this deep dive into how Airbus flipped the script on Boeing, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. We've got plenty more stories on how rivalries like this shape the skies you fly through every day. But while the A330neo looked like a masterstroke, cracks soon began to appear. 
because while Airbus was focused on upgrading an old design, Boeing was slowly fixing the problems that had crippled the 787 program. By 2014, Boeing had stabilized Dreamliner production and started delivering aircraft at a steady pace. Airlines that had once sworn off Boeing were starting to reconsider, and for good reason. The 787's technology finally began to pay off. Its all-composite fuselage made it lighter, which translated directly into longer range and lower fuel burn. The Dreamliner could fly city pairs that were previously impossible, like Boston to Tokyo or Nairobi to New York, opening up new routes that no A330 variant could match. For airlines, that flexibility was gold. The difference became clear in the numbers. The A330neo's range topped out around 7,200 nautical miles, while the 787-9 could fly roughly 7,565. The extra few hundred miles might not sound like much, but it opened dozens of new long-haul routes where the A330neo simply couldn't compete. On top of that, passengers love flying on the Dreamliner. Quieter cabins, higher humidity, and larger windows created a better experience, and airlines took notice. By the late 2010s, orders began to tell the real story. While Airbus secured around 300 orders for the A330neo, Boeing's 787 family soared toward 2,000 orders. Even as the A330neo entered service, most airlines saw it as a bridge, a temporary solution until they could afford the next generation. Airbus had built a clever short-term product, but Boeing had built a long-term winner. Still, that doesn't mean Airbus lost completely. The A330neo gave Airbus something Boeing didn't have, flexibility. Because the aircraft was cheaper and quicker to build, Airbus could offer it at competitive prices and fill production gaps, focusing resources on the A350, which would go on to directly challenge the 787-10 and the 777X. And for smaller or regional long-haul carriers, the A330neo made a lot of sense. It offered near-long-haul capability without the cost and maintenance complexity of a fully composite airframe. But in the bigger picture, the Dreamliner became Boeing's ultimate comeback. After years of chaos, Boeing finally had a modern, efficient widebody that dominated long-haul markets, and Airbus's temporary advantage faded as fast as it appeared. What do you think? Was Airbus's A330neo a smart move or a short-sighted stopgap? Let me know down below and don't forget to drop a like if you're enjoying the analysis. To understand just how dramatically things shifted, it's worth looking at how both companies approached risk. Boeing took the high-stakes route, betting on groundbreaking composite materials, new production systems, and an all-new design that nearly broke the company before it succeeded. Airbus, on the other hand, played it safe, evolving a proven design and capitalizing on Boeing's chaos. For a few years, Airbus looked like the clever one. But in aviation, short-term wins rarely beat long-term innovation. By 2025, the numbers told a clear story. Boeing 787 had received over 1,800 orders across all variants. Airbus's A330neo family barely broke 300. Even airlines that initially chose the A330neo, like AirAsia X and Delta, began diversifying with the A350 or 787 to meet longer range needs. Airbus realized the A330neo couldn't carry its wide body strategy forever. That realization reshaped Airbus's long term plans. The success of the A350, which finally entered service in 2015, showed that Airbus could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Boeing when it embraced next-generation materials and design. But it also revealed something deeper. The A330neo wasn't really meant to beat the 787. It was meant to buy Airbus time. Time to perfect the A350. Time to keep production lines running. And time to hold on to customers until its real long-term competitor was ready. There's a certain irony here. Boeing's 787 program was one of the most painful and expensive in history, but its payoff continues decades later. Airbus's A330neo program, while brilliant in its efficiency and speed, is already fading into the background. Most analysts now agree that the A330neo will likely be the last major derivative of a traditional aluminum wide body. Once the current backlog is built, Airbus's focus will shift entirely to composite-based aircraft meaning the A330's long legacy might finally be nearing its end. Still, it's not hard to admire what Airbus pulled off. The A330neo gave airlines real options during a time when Boeing couldn't deliver. It proved that sometimes, 
Smart timing and pragmatism can rival even the boldest technological bets. And it cemented the A330's reputation as one of the most successful and adaptable aircraft families in history. In fact, that adaptability is why the A330neo continues to sell, even if slowly. Airbus has leaned on its versatility, offering freighter versions, exploring potential military tanker variants, and even pitching the A330neo as a lower-cost solution for airlines emerging from the pandemic recovery. Airbus knows it's not the flashiest jet in the sky, but it doesn't need to be. Its value lies in reliability, the same quiet strength that made the original A330 one of the most widely used twin jets of all time. And that's perhaps the A330neo's greatest contribution. It reminded the industry that not every aircraft needs to break records. Some just need to work efficiently, dependably, and profitably. In many ways, the A330neo's story mirrors Airbus's overall strategy. Pragmatic, cost-conscious, and opportunistic. Boeing tends to swing for the fences with big revolutionary designs. Airbus often looks for the smartest incremental gains. And this time, both strategies paid off, just in different ways and over different timelines. Today, both the 787 and A330neo continue to fly side by side. The Dreamliner dominates long-haul markets, while the A330neo serves as a dependable workhorse for medium and long routes where ultra-long range isn't needed. And that's the real balance of the industry. Not every airline needs to fly the longest route possible. Some just need an aircraft that makes economic sense. For Boeing, the 787 became proof that even a painful beginning can lead to lasting dominance. For Airbus, the A330neo became proof that clever timing and smart evolution can still carve out success even when competing against something more advanced. If you found this story fascinating, make sure to subscribe for more deep dives into aviation's biggest rivalries and tell us in the comments. Do you think Airbus should have focused more on the A350 instead of refreshing the A330? In the end, the A330neo stands as both a victory and a lesson. A victory in how to outmaneuver a struggling competitor, and a lesson in why long-term innovation eventually wins the day. Airbus turned an aging jet into a modern success while Boeing transformed disaster into dominance. And that's what makes this rivalry one of the most defining battles in aviation history.